What's worse than a convicted kidnapper, a murderer, a sex trafficker, and a fraudster? All of those things, but they're still on the run. Although these criminals and their crimes might be brutal, make sure you listen closely, because if you have information on any of these people that leads to their arrest, you may be able to get a reward from the FBI, ranging from up to $250,000 for some and an insane $5 million for others, and the joy of knowing that you brought a monster to justice, of course. Talk about a good payday! Let's start with the thoroughly unpleasant Alexis Flores. Flores is a Honduran fugitive wanted for kidnapping, sexual assault, and murder a triple threat, with a hard emphasis on threat. Back in 2000, he was a homeless drifter, calling himself Carlos, who was hired as a handyman by Jorge Contreras in Huntington Park, Philadelphia. It wasn't long before Flores was missing, and five days later on August 3rd, everyone would find out why he ran off. The body of Eriana de Jesus, a five-year-old girl, was found in the basement of the empty apartment building that Flores was staying in. That poor girl had been assaulted, strangled, and wrapped in a trash bag. They found a shirt near the body that Contreras identified as one he'd lent to Carlos. But how did they find out Carlos was really Alexis Flores? It was because that scumbag couldn't help himself and kept having run-ins with the cops. In Arizona in 2002, he was arrested for shoplifting. Two years later, when the police came to his house for a noise complaint, he would give them a false identity once again. This led to Flores being arrested for possession of a forgery device. Law enforcement would take a sample of Flores' DNA in 2006 to add it to the combined DNA index system. By March 2007, the authorities were able to positively match his DNA to the DNA found at the crime scene. They issued a warrant for his arrest on March 22, 2007, charging him with murder and other felonies to boot. Flores wasn't afraid to add yet another crime to his rap sheet. On that same day, he was charged with unlawful flight to avoid prosecution. And that's why the FBI needs help finding Alexis Flores. He's also caught the eye of Interpol, the International Criminal Police Organization. He's currently on Interpol's version of a wanted list, Red Notice. Check out Mr. Popularity over here. Flores is to be considered armed and dangerous. He can speak fluent Spanish and English. There are no current leads on his whereabouts, but it is believed he might be in the United States or Honduras. You can net yourself a cool quarter million dollars by providing information that leads to his arrest. Next, we have Arnoldo Jimenez, the worst groom in the world. When you say, till death do you part, you usually hope that death doesn't come knocking the day after the wedding. But thanks to Jimenez, that's exactly what happened to his wife, Estrella Carrera. On May 11, 2012, Jimenez and Carrera got married at Chicago City Hall, and the two had a two-year-old son together. Carrera also had a nine-year-old daughter from a previous relationship. The night they tied the knot, the couple had dinner with their loved ones and then went out to a nightclub. They wouldn't leave the club until 4 a.m. the next day. There was to be no wedded bliss for the couple. In the car ride home, they got into a heated argument, and Jimenez stabbed his new wife multiple times. After that, the murderous groom dragged her body into her apartment and left her in a bathtub in her silver wedding dress. Carrera was reported as missing by her family when she failed to pick up her children on May 12th, but the police decided not to check her apartment first because they wouldn't find her body until May 13th. Jimenez was long gone by then, along with his car. On May 12th, they were able to track his cell phone through Chicago, Southern Illinois, Memphis, Tennessee, and then in Arkansas. By May 13th, they were able to trace his calls he'd been making in Houston and then Hidalgo, Mexico. It seems crime runs in the family since Jimenez's brother Humberto was arrested in September 2012 on drug charges. When they were searching his garage, they would find his brother's black Maserati. Arnoldo had been there, and sure enough, inside the car, there was blood. It was enough for the cops to believe that Arnaldo Jimenez had indeed killed his wife of a single day. It's thought that Jimenez might have fled to Santiago Papasquiaro in Durango, Mexico, or Reynosa, Tamaulipas, Mexico. And of course, 250,000 bucks is up for grabs if you provide information that leads to his capture. Next comes Omar Alexander Cardenas, a specialist in random acts of horrific violence. After a long day at work, it's normal to want to stop by a store and grab a well-deserved drink on the way home. And that was a common ritual for 46-year-old Khabali Dumas after he'd finished his shift at a trash company. Sadly for Dumas, on August 15, 2019, he'd ended his shift only to come face to face with human trash in the form of Omar Alexander Cardenas. Cardenas approached Dumas and shot him nine times from around 30 feet away. Dumas was hit in the head and would die at the scene. As to why Cardenas targeted Dumas isn't clear, 
No one knows if the two knew each other before the encounter. There is a video of the shooting where you can see Cardenas making his getaway while trying to keep his pants up. Safe to say he's a real tough guy. Police issued a local arrest warrant for the murder on April 3, 2020, but it would become a federal arrest warrant on September 2, 2021, adding unlawful flight to avoid prosecution on top of that murder charge. Authorities believe he might have fled to Mexico or Southern California. If you do see him, do not approach him. He is considered armed and dangerous. It's also thought that Cardenas might be a member of the Pierce Street Gang or the street gang Pasioma Van Nice Boys Anybody Kill Us. But if you are safely able to provide information that leads to his arrest, you'll be rewarded handsomely by the FBI to the tune of $250,000. From small-time murderers to narco supervillains, it's Yulan Andone Archaga Carillas. Yulan sounds like he could either be the lead character or lead antagonist of a show like Breaking Bad or Narcos, and he's every bit as violent and scary as that suggests. Archaga Carillas is the alleged leader of the Honduran branch of Mara Savaltrucha, or MS-13, an international criminal gang that started out in Los Angeles back in the 80s. Archaga Carillas is wanted for racketeering, narcotics trafficking, and firearms offenses. After talking about murderers taking innocent lives, Archaga Carias is almost a breath of fresh air. Well, until you realize he's also wanted for ordering the murders of rival gang members. It's also hard to say how many innocent people have been hurt as he committed his crimes. In 2015, they arrested Archaga Carias for money laundering and illicit association and imprisoned him in Honduras. But he didn't plan on staying long. On February 13, 2020, Archaga Carias would make a daring escape. He left prison for El Progreso to attend a court hearing about 17 miles away from San Pedro Sula. The criminal was transported in a prisoner van but didn't have a lot of security guards escorting him. Authorities had alerted the military police, but it wouldn't be enough to stop what would happen when they reached the courthouse. What happened next could have been taken straight out of a Hollywood script, but as unbelievable as it might be, everything from here on actually happened. When Archaga Carrias and the authorities arrived at the courthouse, an MS-13 squad burst inside and opened fire on the guards inside. During the chaos caused by the barrage of gunfire, Archaga Carrias was somehow able to escape unharmed. When they looked back at the security footage, the story became even more unreal. There were two groups of men dressed in military police uniforms. There was a man in handcuffs with the first group. That man wasn't a real prisoner, he was a decoy. The second group was escorting what looked like a man in a black tunic that's used to protect a witness or a victim's identity. Instead, the MS-13 squad used it to hide its weapons and ammunition. It was a daring plan you only think would happen in a movie. In 2021, Archaga Carrias replaced Robert William Fisher on the FBI's most wanted list since Fisher no longer fit the criteria. If you're wondering, Fisher killed his whole family and blew up his house. And yes, he is still at large. How he no longer fits the criteria to be on the list, well, we can't really tell you. Yulan should be considered armed and dangerous. They also believe he can only speak Spanish. And because of the particularly high-profile nature of Yulan's crimes, the FBI is offering an insane reward of up to $5 million for information that leads to his arrest. Next, Badresh Kumar Chintanbay Patel, the bloodthirsty barista. When you're pulling an all-nighter and grabbing a cup of coffee at Dunkin' Donuts to wake you up, your last thought is that one of those baristas might be a murderer. But anyone served by Patel might now be thinking that for the rest of their lives. Badresh Kumar Patel and Palak Patel married in 2015 and traveled to the United States to visit family. The family they were visiting owned a Dunkin' Donuts in Hanover, Maryland, and during their stay they helped work the night shift on April 12, 2015. Authorities could see from the security footage that Patel and Palak disappeared behind some racks, and a few moments later Patel would reappear without his wife. He turned off the oven and left the store. Customers in the store waiting for their orders became concerned when nobody was coming out to serve them. The concerned customers approached a nearby police officer to ask him to check out the store, worried that something was very wrong. When checking the back of the fast food joint, the officer found Palak's body. The 21-year-old woman had been beaten to death and stabbed several times with a large kitchen knife. After watching the security footage, police immediately identified her husband as the culprit. However, this took nearly an hour, giving Patel time to grab some things from his nearby apartment before getting a cab to a hotel near the Newark Liberty International Airport. Eerily, the taxi driver said Patel was calm throughout their journey. There was no reason for the driver to suspect he was transporting a murderer making his escape. Patel paid for the cab in cash, and he would check out of the hotel the next morning. 
The last time anyone reported seeing Patel was on April 13, 2015, at around 10 a.m. at Newark Penn Station in New Jersey. It is possible that Patel and Palak had been arguing before the murder. Palak wanted to return to India, but Patel wanted to stay in the U.S. Palak's family stated that the last conversation they had with her was over the phone moments before her murder. She told them she wanted to return to India, and they believed Patel overheard them. It seems like Patel's conflict resolution skills were dangerously lacking. It's possible Patel fled the country, the country he killed to stay in, or he could be hiding with his relatives. He had a visa, but it had expired by the time he murdered his wife. If he did flee the country, he'd have to get help from friends and family, as his expired visa would make it very difficult to fly out. Investigators believe that Patel murdered his wife on impulse and that it wasn't a planned event. He didn't have a real escape plan in place. They know that Patel has connections in Canada, India, New Jersey, Kentucky, Georgia, and Illinois. Like everyone else on the list, there's a reward for any information of his whereabouts. And seriously, do not try to approach any of these people. There's a good chance you'll get added to the list of their crimes. Next comes the truly repulsive Donald Eugene Fields II, and a warning that what you're about to hear is extremely disturbing. Fields is one of the nastiest people of all on the list. He's wanted for sex trafficking of at least one child in Missouri. The Kentucky Natives Wanted poster states that he tried to recruit, entice, harbor, transport, provide, obtain, maintain, patronize, or solicit a person whom he believed was under the age of 18 and would be caused to engage in a commercial sex act. For the protection of his victims, we'll simply say that this is a pattern for Fields. He'll gain the trust of underage children in order to exploit them. The last known residence was in Franklin County, Missouri, but he also has family in Missouri itself as well as Kentucky. He's also a big fan of casinos and he likes traveling to Florida. Fields is between 6 feet and 6 foot 4 inches tall, weighs about 219 to 235 pounds. He has hazel eyes and scars on his groin, chest, left calf, and both knees, as well as a tribal tattoo on his right shoulder. He might be going by an alias like Don Fields, Donald Eugene Fields Jr., or Eugene Fields, and it's possible he's hiding with Jennifer Iskriggs, a 30-year-old woman who he may be romantically involved with, which is shocking because on paper, she definitely seems a little too old for him. You might not be surprised to find out that Iskriggs has a warrant out for her arrest as well. She's wanted for failure to pay child support. We can't say we're too shocked that this is the sort of company Fields keeps. If he's with you, Jennifer, we suggest you do the right thing. Be a snitch, rat out Fields, and then pay your child support. If you don't know where he is, you should still pay your child support. We won't hold our breath, though. If you, the person watching this video, has information that can bring Fields' horrible crime spree to an end, you can claim the reward instead. Next comes a financial criminal who girl-bossed a little too close to the sun, Ruja Ignatova. In a tiny dose of criminal equality, Ignatova is the only woman on our list. She's helping prove women can be scummy too, by committing wire fraud. We're actually kind of impressed. Like Archaga Carias, she could make an excellent villainess. Maybe they could form a power couple with a collective $5,250,000 reward. Ignatova is wanted for helping lead a massive fraud scheme that impacted millions of investors around the world, making her fit right in as a character on Ozark or Mr. Robot. She's the founder of the Bulgaria-based company OneCoin Limited, which marketed cryptocurrency throughout the crypto boom that happened in the past few years. Ignatova would lie to get people to invest in OneCoin, leading to her victims transmitting investment funds into their OneCoin accounts to purchase so-called OneCoin packages. We're sure we don't need to tell you that this money did not go toward any kind of investment. Ignatova was able to earn more than $4 billion from her victims through this scheme. Sorry, crypto bros, looks like you're an easy target for someone like Ruja Ignatova. On October 12, 2017, the United States District Court, Southern District of New York, charged her and issued a warrant for her arrest. Ignatova would disappear on October 25, 2017. Later in 2019, Konstantin Ignatova, her brother, pled guilty to fraud and money laundering. There is some debate on whether Ignatova is still alive, but authorities are confident that she is still living somewhere out there. Even so, BIRD, the Bureau for Investigative Reporting and Data, reported that she was murdered in November 2018. Her murder was ordered by Christophoros Taki Amanatidis, a Bulgarian drug lord. Amanatidis is currently in a Dutch prison for drug trafficking. As the story goes, Ignatova was dismembered and thrown overboard on a yacht in the Ionian Sea. They think it was Amanatidis' attempt to cover up his involvement in OneCoin. 
Although, we did say that murdering someone to cover up your tracks will probably just bring more attention to you. But the dead tell no tales, as they say. But it is unlikely anyway. Paul Roberts, an FBI special agent, said in a 2022 interview that they're operating under the assumption that Ignatova is still alive. So we feel confident in saying she's probably still out there somewhere. They also believe she might be traveling with armed guards, but she might pose more of a danger if you're into cryptocurrency. If you're still buying up cryptocurrency, maybe keep an eye out for Ruja Ignatova, the crypto queen. And if you provide information that helps catch her, the reward can reimburse you for your crypto losses. Partially, at least. Next, we got a nasty narco-terrorist with one hell of a rap sheet, Wilver Viegas Palomino. Cocaine seems to be a common component of getting yourself on the FBI's most wanted list, and that's one of the things that landed Wilver Viegas Palomino on the FBI's radar. The 41-year-old Viegas Palomino has been charged with narco-terrorism, international cocaine distribution conspiracy, and international cocaine distribution. He's a high-ranking member of the National Liberation Army, sometimes simply shortened to the ELN, for Ejército de Liberación Nacional, a Colombian Marxist-Leninist guerrilla insurgency group. It's not a surprise that his drug trafficking activities are connected to the ELN Northeastern Warfront in Colombia and Venezuela, more specifically in the Catatumbo region. The ELN Northeastern Warfront produces 200 tons of cocaine a year that they then distribute all over the world. If you see him, contact the police immediately. He's between 5 foot 7 inches and 5 foot 9 inches tall, weighs about 190 pounds, and has black hair and brown eyes. He's Colombian, speaks Spanish, and he might be going by an alias like Carlos El Puerco, meaning Carlos the Hog, El Puerco, Wilver Villegas, or Wilver Palomino. If you help turn him in, you can get up to $5 million as a reward. Next, Alejandro Rosales Castillo, who became embroiled in a horrifying crime of passion. Teenage love can be fleeting at best and unstable at worst, especially when you introduce a love triangle. That's when all hell breaks loose. In the case of Alejandro Rosales Castillo, it was downright deranged. When he was 17 years old in 2016, he briefly dated 23-year-old Truk Kwan Sandy Lai Li, his co-worker at a Shomar's restaurant. At some point, Castillo had lent Lee money and she never paid it back. Castillo had also started dating yet another co-worker, 19-year-old Amia Feaster, after breaking up with Lee. We're going to go ahead and encourage people to not date co-workers, especially two in a row. It's never a good idea, kids. And this time it had deadly consequences. Castillo texted Lee on August 9, 2016 that he wanted his money back. Obviously, not seeing anything odd about that, Lee agreed to meet him at a quick trip on Eastway Drive in Charlotte, North Carolina. It would become the last place anyone saw Lee alive. Feaster picked up Castillo that afternoon and took him to meet Lee. Authorities believe that instead of asking for his money back, Castillo made Lee withdraw all of her money from her bank account. She may have been held at gunpoint, but we'll never truly know. Lee's bank statements show that she withdrew all the money she had in her account at the ATM, which was $1,000. After this, they believe Castillo took Lee to Cabarrus County and shot her once in the head in a wooded area. She died instantly. Castillo dumped her body into a ravine before fleeing the scene with Feaster. They took Lee's car, a black four-door 2003 Toyota Corolla. Castillo and Feaster went from North Carolina to Phoenix, Arizona, parking Lee's car at a bus shelter in Phoenix. After Castillo and Feaster went to Nogales, Arizona, they crossed over to Mexico to escape. The day after she was murdered, Lee was reported as missing. On August 11th and 12th, Castillo and Feaster would also be reported missing. It took until August 13th for the police to find Feaster's Dodge Caliber. On August 15th, Lee's car was found at the bus shelter. After Feaster's car was found, Castillo and Feaster called the families to let them know they were safe. The families were convinced Castillo and Feaster were being held captive and forced to make the phone call. They couldn't imagine any wrongdoing on Castillo and Feaster's part. Things would grow more tragic for the families on August 17, 2016, when they would discover Lee's body. At the time, however, the police believed that this was just a robbery gone wrong. On November 16 of that same year, that all changed. They charged Castillo with first-degree murder, and then he was charged with unlawful flight to avoid prosecution on February 10, 2017. On October 20, 2016, in Aguas Calientes, Mexico, Feaster would turn herself in. Feaster reached out to her mother, who helped her cooperate with the United States police. Police ended up collecting her at the airport and bringing her back to the United States. Feaster would be charged with accessory after the fact of felony murder 
and larceny of a motor vehicle. She would eventually be sent to Mecklenburg County Jail. After posting bond, she'd be released on January 18, 2017. Feaster revealed that they were staying with Castillo's cousins in Aguas Calientes, but Castillo went missing after two months. It's believed he's still hiding in Mexico. Authorities believe he could be in San Francisco de los Romo, Pabellón de Arteaga, Guanajuato, or Veracruz. If he's back in the United States, he could be in Charlotte, North Carolina. He also has ties to Phoenix, Arizona. In a single day, Castillo shed so much blood and caused a lot of devastation over a measly $1,000. From an impulsive young killer to a seasoned criminal pro, we've got the one and only Jose Rodolfo Villarreal Hernandez. This Mexican drug cartel boss is wanted for interstate stalking and conspiracy to commit murder for hire. Villarreal Hernandez set out to murder Juan Jesus Guerrero Chapa, a United States government informant. He was also the personal lawyer of Osiel Cardenas, the former head of the Gulf Cartel. Villarreal Hernandez and at least three of his men had been stalking Guerrero with high-tech surveillance equipment prior to the murder. They even had placed a GPS device in his car and placed remote-controlled cameras around his home. They carefully planned their attack in what sounds like a pulpy crime novel. Guerrero was with his wife at the time of the murder. They were at the town square when two of Villarreal Hernandez's assassins shot him multiple times. Fortunately, his wife was not injured, but we can't imagine she left the whole ordeal mentally or emotionally unscathed. The assassins were called Clorox and Captain, as if they were taking a page out of a comic book henchman's handbook. The gunmen haven't been found. Although he remains on the FBI's most wanted list, he was arrested in Mexico City, Mexico on January 7, 2023. However, the two assassins who killed Guerrero remain at large. You may still be able to collect a reward if you have information on them, but we personally wouldn't recommend you attempt to approach a pair of terrifying cartel assassins if you value your life. If you liked this video, be sure to watch FBI's Most Wanted Criminals 2023 edition, or this is how the FBI will catch you on the dark web.